Hello. Welcome to a video on, Demand Driven Material Requirements Planning. DDMRP, is functionality which is new to S4 HANA, compared to what is available in ECC. More information about the theory around DDMRP can found with the Demand Driven Institute. This video presents a high-level and generic overview, of a specific SAP functionality. The views, information or opinions expressed, are solely those of the individuals involved, and not those of the individual's employer, or any other third-party group or individual. The goal of this video is to provide information, on the selected functionality and process. Before we jump into the demo, of demand-driven requirements planning, we will go through some important key words, as well as the concept of DDMRP. So bear with us, and we will be at the demo section of the video shortly. Let's first look at the potential benefits, which can be achieved by using DDMRP. The first benefit, is the ability to stabilize the production environment. By utilizing the buffers at the decoupling points, production will be helped by avoiding key missing parts, resulting in less incomplete production orders. Secondly, the strategic decoupling in production through the use of buffers, means that the lead times in production will be compressed, making execution and planning less error prone. Thirdly, as the buffers are responsive to the demand, they will also synchronize the inventory with demand. Prior to explaining the concept, and looking into the system, we will discuss a few keywords. A decoupling point is an inventory position, where a buffer is placed. The decoupling also means that the MRP will use this point, as the starting point when making calculations. The criteria which is used to determine where a decoupling point should be located are ABC, which is the value of the material. XYZ, which is the volatility of the material. EFG, which is the lead time of the material. PQR, which is the frequency of usage in bill of materials for the material. Decoupled lead time is specific to DDMRP. It is constructed to absorb variability and compress lead times. This is done by calculating an intermediate lead time in the DDMRP setup, which is the DLT, or decoupled lead time. Traditional MRP calculation uses what is known as the cumulative lead time, which is manufacturing lead time plus the longest procurement lead time. Qualified demand is important for DDMRP. It is all sales requirements which are due today or in the past. It also considers future order spikes, based on sales requirements. Forecasts are not considered qualified demand. A decoupled explosion means the ability to stop an MRP explosion, at a decoupling point, or if you prefer to call it, a buffer position. The stopped explosion means that the planning to resupply the buffer position will restart only when there is an actual qualified demand. DDMRP introduced a net flow concept in order to manage supply orders. The net flow equation is using the following information. Available stock, add stock already ordered through supply channels, subtract qualified sales order demand, which equals the net flow position. Each decoupling point is an inventory buffer, which only acts on qualified demand. It has three status levels. Green. Yellow. Red. The planning and execution is based on for maintaining the integrity of the decoupling points. The strategic inventory buffers are sized relative to the ADU, which is short for average daily demand. It is monitored, and dynamically adjusted, when there are changes to actual demand. Material requirements planning, also known as MRP, has been around for a long time. In the 1950s computers started to be able to make rapid and complex calculations, and when we reached the 1960s MRP received its name and fame. Then, in the 1970s, MRP developed into purchasable software. The business environment has, naturally, gone through several changes since the middle of the last century. The complexity of supply chains has evolved into what could be thought of as intricate spider webs. This goes hand in hand, with the concept that the competition in business is between different ecosystems, rather than between individual companies. The lifespan of a new product has decreased dramatically, and the number of choices has exploded in most industries. Just consider the difference in the supply of phones from your childhood, until today. In addition, the cost of doing business, known as the transactional cost has decreased dramatically. This may be attributed to the increased ease, to find new suppliers when needed, as well as being able to look over a wider geography. This is true for customers and companies alike. This all means that the requirement to be able to stay in business has changed, and it is likely that business supply chains will continue to increase in complexity, going forward. This gives a few challenges. As customers more easily can change suppliers, delivery times are decreasing, which means shorter sales order visibility horizon. As the products grow increasingly complex, and the supply chains grow larger, both in number of participants and geography, 
the end-to-end lead times grow longer. The variation of products makes demand less predictable. And as a popular saying goes, no chain is stronger than its weakest link, it must also mean that the more links there is in the supply chain, the higher the likelihood of a disruption. This situation poses a conundrum for planners where, there is often too little stock of the products needed, too much stock of the products not needed. Overall there is too much stock and still it is not possible to fulfill the customer wishes on time and in full. To combat this problem, demand-driven MRP was invented. DDMRP emphasizes visibility and variability reduction in the supply chain. Beside using concepts from Lean, Theory of Constraints and Six Sigma, it also comes with a set of innovations. We have gone through them in the keyword section. Decoupled lead time through the usage of decoupling points, also known as buffer positioning. These points allow planning and execution to be compressed, with decoupled lead times to provide more realistic timing indications for the protection of stock availability. Net flow equation, applied daily using three elements, what is available, what is on the way, what is truly required, also known as qualified demand or sales requirements. Decoupled explosion is the ability to restart an explosion at a decoupling point, using the net flow equation. Planning emphasis is on buffer status, both from planning and execution, to focus limited time and resources to maintain the integrity of the decoupling points. Now you may ask, what is the difference between MRP and DDMRP? On a high level, although there are different options, conventional MRP on finished goods level, typically plan based on forecast. This is a major difference to DDMRP which base its planning solely on what is known as qualified demand. Qualified demand, as we recall from the keywords section, means actual sales requirements. MRP uses the cumulative lead time for all levels of the bill of material. Depending on the number of levels of the bomb, this will mean making calculations far into the future. With DDMRP the lead time used is the decoupled lead time. This is a given, as the buffers will maintain their integrity against system shocks, and hence the need to gaze far into the future is less, than with conventional MRP. The tightly coupled process of conventional MRP, is suggested by the fact that it runs all levels of a bomb, adding up to a cumulative lead time. All different levels are planned together. For DDMRP, the demand signal doesn't go past the decoupling points, hence the buffers prevent the bull whip to amplify further down the supply chain. When should I use which? When should I use DDMRP and when should I use MRP? If we again spend some time with the bill of material, what do we see? We see that, depending on the characteristic of a given part number, we use either the buffer planning of DDMRP or conventional MRP. This should clarify the main point, they are complementary and not exclusive. Even when you run DDMRP, your conventional MRP types will still be valid. What are the characteristics for a part number to be planned through DDMRP? Generally, the part number is difficult to forecast. The worse the forecast accuracy is, the more likely the part number is a good candidate for planning through DDMRP. Second, the longer the lead time at a buffer position, the better the saving from the lead time compression achieved through the decoupling points. We will now go through what we soon will be looking at in the system. First, we will have one part number, which represents the finished good. Secondly, we will have two sub-assemblies. Thirdly, we will have three raw materials, or components. The finished good, is an electronic bike. It consists of two sub-assemblies. There is a gear assembly, and there is the painted frame. The gear assembly requires a blank gear and an axle. The painted frame requires a central frame to be produced. Strategic decoupling points has been proposed in three places by the DDMRP. The decoupling points are set on the actual finished product, the electronic bike. A second decoupling point has been decided at the gear assembly. It has also been decided that the central frame will be buffered. The decoupled lead time which you see, the DLT, is based on the longest lead time of the components used plus the manufacturing lead time. To give an example, you can see that the lead time to make the gear assembly is 8 days. This is recorded under lead time. The gear assembly has two components. The blank gear has a procurement lead time of 6 days, the axle has a lead time of 3 days. As we are using the longest component lead time, this means that the component lead time is 6 days in this case. This means that the DLT, or decoupled lead time, is 14 days. 8 for the manufacturing lead time in the gear assembly, plus 6, for the procurement lead time for the blank gear. Finally we will look at the formulas which are used in DDMRP. They are quite straightforward, and easy to understand. When calculating the buffer size of a decoupling point, we start by calculating the yellow zone. This is done by multiplying the average daily use with the decoupled lead time. The second calculation is the red base. 
This is achieved by multiplying the result of the yellow zone, with a decided lead time factor. To complete the calculation for the red zone, the red base is multiplied with the demand variability factor. The green zone is finally calculated, considering also the minimum order quantity if required. You now see the situation in the same way as a planner would. If a part number is in the green zone, then no additional action is typically needed to be performed. The middle layer, the yellow, signifies a warning that action needs to be taken. The red zone indicates that action required is imminent. As we are now starting the demonstration part of the video, we will first look at how the system proposes where the decoupling points should be placed. This is done in the tile buffer positioning. You have plenty of filtering possibilities to ensure that you review only the data you wish to see. We select the product number of our bike, the bike which we went through previously in the scenario description. We can see the different classifications, according to the criteria we went through in the keyword section. We can also see that our bike is buffered. From the screen it is also possible to calculate the decoupled lead time, as well as choose to buffer or unbuffer a product. The buffer analysis shows the relevant data, such as product type, individual lead time for the product, how the material is planned, in this case according to DDMRP, as well as the buffer profile, make, long lead time, low variability. From the buffer analysis we can expand the bill of material. That way the person responsible for the material planning, has a complete overview of product structure, and how each single subassembly and component is planned. The planner can also see which materials are planned by DDMRP, and which components the lie on the longest path. There is also a graphical representation on the bill of material, with the possibility of seeing for example variability variations or how the decoupled lead time was derived. Here we see the entire product structure of our electronic bike, including all relevant lead time data. The system can visualize, for example, which components are buffered. Next we look at the buffer levels for the parts, which are being planned with DDMRP. The materials with strategic buffers, including proposals made by the system are shown on the overview page. We select the product which we are interested in, our electronic bike. Here we find more detailed information on buffer levels. Average daily use, also known as ADU. The decoupled lead time. And the classification data. It is also possible to edit the data. We can, for example, make adjustment to buffers, which may be relevant in the case of promotions. We can simulate changes, by selecting a time period. Once we have selected the time period, we will add adjustment factors to the buffer calculations. In this first example we will shrink all buffers. This is simulating an example, where we expect the qualified demand to be much lower than normal. When we are using the simulation capability, we will immediately see the results of our new value graphically. We now repeat the process of changing a time period. In this second period, we will instead increase the buffer slightly and we instantly see the results in the graphics. Next we will look at replenishment planning. It is possible to sort the products according to relevant criteria. The planner is supported by color coding, which clearly show which products to prioritize. You see planning priority, the net flow position, the proposed quantity to procure. There is a planning action, as well as key figures for on-hand buffer status, on-hand stock and open supply orders. You can open a specific product and review the planning details. You see a planned order, which can be converted into a production order. You also see information on the decoupled lead time for producing the product. Back at the main screen, we will use the button for create supply. When doing so, we automatically create a planned order with a quantity which will move the buffer status to top of green. When entering the detailed screen again, you see the newly created planned order. The final step in this video is the replenishment execution. Upon entering the replenishment execution, you can see that the prioritized order for the planner is on hand stock. Again we enter the detailed screen. From here the planner can easily edit the planned order. The planned order can also be converted as suggested. In our example the planner adjusts the quantity in the planned order, and chooses to convert it into a production order. We are now going back to the main page for replenishment execution. As the planner has the key information available for each product on the main page, it is also possible to expedite the supply already from here, by converting the planned order. In this particular case it is converted into a purchase order. 
Demand-driven materials requirements planning is available in S4 HANA Cloud and in S4 HANA on-premise. DDMRP is licensed separately. Not shown in this video, however, DDMRP functionality is also available in SAP Integrated Business Planning. Let us conclude by reviewing the benefits of DDMRP. The first benefit is the ability to stabilize the production environment. By utilizing the buffers at the decoupling points, production will be helped by avoiding key missing parts, resulting in less incomplete production orders. Secondly, the strategic decoupling in production through the use of buffers means that the lead times in production will be compressed, making execution and planning less error prone. Thirdly, as the buffers are responsive to the demand, they will also synchronize the inventory with demand. Thanks a lot for watching. Please comment, like and subscribe. More videos like this coming shortly. See you then.